Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys to another Fire Emblem character spotlights. In honor of the annual month of Hectember, we will be showcasing one of the sexiest lords in the Fire Emblem series, Hector. Hector is the younger brother of Lord Uther, the Marcus of Ostia. He is one of the three main characters of Fire Emblem Blazing Sword and the first axe-wielding lord in the series. Many consider Hector to be a spiritual successor to Lex from Genealogy of the Holy War. Hector was born and raised in Ostia Castle with his family. At a very young age, his parents passed away from illness, leaving his big brother Uther to take care of him. Uther acted much as a father figure to Hector, being strict but always caring for his little brother. Growing up, Hector was sort of an odd figure in the Ostian nobility. He was brash, reckless, and always tackled his problems head-on, rather than being polite, sophisticated, and cunning. This gave him quite a bad reputation among the other nobles, as the only thing he was really good at was fighting. Because of this, Hector avoided politics and stayed as far away from the court as possible, preferring to be out practicing his skills with an axe rather than attending dinners. During Hector's studies, he encountered Eliwood of Fera, who attended many of the same classes he did, and the two of them became fast friends, a friendship that would later cause Hector to embark on a wild adventure when Eliwood's father, Lord Elbert, went missing. As Eliwood gathered up his knights and vassals in order to search for his father, he did not inform his friend of the expedition, afraid that Hector would feel obliged to partake. Hector learned of this, however, and was furious that Eliwood didn't include him, deciding to set off to join the expedition himself. Hector's brother Uther did not condone him leaving the castle, but knew that he could not contain Hector forever, so he sent his knight Oswin along to keep an eye on him and to keep him safe. From that point on, Hector would follow Eliwood on his journey to rescue his father, and would never stray away from his friend, no matter the hardships. During his journey, Hector received news from Ostia that Uther had died of an illness, and that Oswin had been keeping it from him under orders from his lord. Hector naturally became furious, but didn't stray from Eliwood's side, determined to see his friend's quest true to the end. At some point during his travels, Hector would eventually come across the legendary axe Armads, which he would need in order to defeat Nergal. The spirit of the berserker Durbans, who had wielded the axe in the past, warned Hector that the price of picking up the axe was that he would not die peacefully in a bed, but rather a violent death on the battlefield. Despite this, Hector picked up the axe to aid his friend, knowing full well that the warning could be real. After a long battle and finally defeating Nergal, Hector returned home to Lycia with Eliwood. There, Hector would take up the role as the new Marcus of Ostia. While he had little talent in governing, he soon grew to become a fine lord, respected by his people. He would later have a daughter named Lilina. However, as Durbans had predicted, Hector would not die peacefully in a bed. Many years later, Lycia was suddenly attacked by the neighboring country of Bern without warning. Hector led an army from Ostia to repel the invaders at the border, but the army was engulfed in flames from a dragon. Hector fortified his position in a nearby fort, but was eventually attacked by two of Bern's generals, Brunja and Narshan. And while he put up a good fight, he was eventually defeated. The King of Bern, Saphiel, who Hector had ironically risked his life to save many years prior, commended Hector for his bravery and fighting skills, but then ordered him to be thrown into the dungeons to die. Hector was later found heavily injured in the dungeons by Eliwood's son Roy, but it was too late to save him. He gave Roy his final words of warning and then asked him to take care of his daughter Lilina before passing away.
Hector is a man of strong build and strong character. He stands taller than most of the men around him, and while his armor covers most of his body, it's obvious he has to be quite strong to wear it, as it's actually designed for a rider on horseback, not a man on foot. He has the signature blue hair of the Ostian nobility, and a face that shows a desire to take action. In his later years, Hector has retained his strong build and grown a large blue beard, befitting of his manliness. Hector's personality can only be described as reckless. He has an enormous temper and often jumps straight into things before thinking them through. While he may seem a bit short-sighted, Hector is not stupid, he just prefers actions over words. Despite his brute nature, however, he is shown to possess an extraordinary amount of loyalty. He gladly picks up the legendary axe Armads to help his friend Eliwood, despite knowing full well it might get him killed one day. He is also shown to have difficulties forgiving, as can be seen in his conversations with Jafar, where he treats him quite badly and says he will never trust him no matter what happens. In his older age, Hector has grown wiser and more steadfast, while still retaining some of his fiery passion. As a unit, I will focus mostly on Hector's appearance in Blazing Sword, where he plays the biggest role. Hector is one of the three mandatory characters in the story, regardless of what route the player picks, and it is therefore very little reason not to use him. If the player decides to go with Eliwood's routes, there are some chapters where Hector will not be mandatory, but the later ones will nearly always require him to be fielded. Hector is considered by many to be the strongest of the three lords in Blazing Sword's early game, mainly because he is the only one of the three capable of wielding a ranged weapon before promotion in the Hand Axe, allowing him to attack and retaliate at range while Eliwood and Lindis are locked to their swords. Hector is also incredibly easy to level up, as Blazing Sword's early game features a ton of lance-wielding armor knights, soldiers and cavaliers. This combined with his personal weapon, the Wolf Beal, which happens to be effective against most of these enemies, will allow Hector to rise quickly through the ranks, often hitting level 20 long before his promotion. Hector's growth rates are quite solid, focusing heavily on strength and defense. He can sometimes get screwed over by his 35% growth in speed, however, but thanks to his high constitution, he is able to wield most axes without speed penalty, allowing him to double most enemies, even on hard mode. Hector has many incredibly fast and effective supports, particularly with the other lords. Getting an A-rank support with Eliwood and a B-rank support with Lin can be done very quickly, and it is definitely recommended, as it is very helpful in the early game. Hector struggles against mages, mercenaries and myrmidons, however, and should be kept far away from them at all costs. Blazing Sword is very stingy with its Reaver weapons and only gives the player a single Sword Reaver throughout the entire game, so Hector will most likely have to let the other members of the army deal with sword wielding enemies until he promotes. Hector's promotion can either come somewhat late or incredibly late, depending on the story the player picks. In Eliwood's story, the player can choose to give Hector the Heaven Seal in Chapter 22, but in his own story he needs to wait for his forced promotion at the end of Chapter 27, which can leave him stuck as a useless level 20 lord for a very long time. Hector's promotion, while unshackling his stats and giving him access to swords, is considered the worst of the three lords. While both Eliwood and Lin will benefit from extra mobility, Hector is stuck with five movements. This can easily be sold by giving him some boots, and this is definitely recommended if he is the main lord of the story. Giving him a sword can make it a little easier for him to combat other sword-wielding enemies, but training his weapon skill is something most people consider a waste of time, as there's so many other good axes for him to wield in the late game. Once he gets his hands on the Armads, Hector easily becomes one of the deadliest units in your army, capable of dishing out insane amounts of damage in the final chapter. He is one of the characters that will most likely deal the most damage to the Fire Dragon, particularly with maxed out supports. Well, aside from Kanas or Athos with a Luna Tome, but hey, nobody can really compete with that shit. Hector is playable in Binding Blade as well, but only as a bonus character available for the trial maps. You unlock him by beating the game three times. 
He is not amazingly strong, but has cap defense and pretty decent resistance for a general. His speed is terrible, but at the very least he has the decency to come equipped with a Brave Axe, and with his beastly constitution of 20, he is one of the few characters in the game capable of wielding it without a speed penalty. Still though, there are far more powerful characters to use in the trial maps, but it's nice to see him playable nevertheless. Thank you for watching this Fire Emblem Character Spotlights. Let me know who you want featured in the next episode by telling me in the comments section. If you would be so kind as to give this video a like, that also helps out my channel a ton. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be automatically notified when the next video is released. At any rate, my name's been Manx, and I'll see you guys next time.